Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of the Freehand Podcast. Today I am in Worcester. Um, It's a town in Massachusetts. And I'm getting out of my comfort zone a little bit today. I was honestly kind of scared to get out of my comfort zone. Um, I'll explain what's happening but I kind of feel stupid, <laughs> um, because for the last month I've been at the house working on some knit projects, and I've, I have my little routine that I'm that I've been doing while my husband is at work, um, and he does a lot of driving for the job that he has, and. Where we live in Rhode Island, from from where we live in Rhode Island, Worcester, Massachusetts, is about an hour, like an hour and a half from where we live. So he's got a long commute because of his job. And today, um, something changed where I was able to come along. So he invited me, uh, like, you know, he asked me if I wanted to come to Worcester with him. Um... And basically, I can have the van, and I can do whatever I wanted in this new town for a day, and uh, not be cooped up in the house all day, because we only have one vehicle, so when he's using it to go to work, I'm pretty much just stuck. (laughs) Um, And... So at first it was like, oh cool, like I can like go somewhere, I can explore a new town, I can do something fun. And then the anxiety and the fear ki- kicked in and I'm like, oh, well I, I don't know this town or this isn't something that I'm I've been doing for the last many weeks. So I I don't know, this is uncomfortable. Also to mention, we got a good sized snowstorm the other day and um the roads are Today they look a lot better, but there's still ice and a lot of snow and salt residue, black ice a little bit some places, but today most of the roads are good, and it's a fairly sunny day today, which is wonderful. Um, And backstory for me, I, I was born in Rhode Island when I was really young. When I was two years old, my family moved to North Carolina, and I grew up there. I spent about 13 years growing up in North Carolina then. I don't know if all these years add up. I'm 22 currently, so (laughs) if the numbers of years don't add up while I'm going back and forth, it's okay. (laughs) Um, Then we moved back to Rhode Island, and I think I spent, it was either four years or five years, I don't exactly know how many years, um, in Rhode Island. And that was the end of high school, college, um, I spent living in Rhode Island, and then I moved to Texas, got married, and I lived in Texas for two years. Now, we're visiting my family back in Rhode Island, so there's a lot of back and forth, (laughs) Um, but the point is, when I lived in Rhode Island for four years, it snows, like, if nobody knows Rhode Island, I do not recommend, Rhode Island's not that great, um, you much rather spend your time in Massachusetts or New York or like please go to Maine or Vermont like or New Hampshire it's like so much nicer um but there's a lot of snow the winter's long um it the 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 state is prepared for all the snow so when you get a big snowstorm you're like all right we got to deal with it and like nothing stops it's actually kind of funny like you could get like 8 inches of snow and the plows are out and then like not even the next day, like, that evening, people are going to Walmart, people are going to work, like, stuff is still open, there's, there's never, in the time that I've, I've lived in Rhode Island, there's never been, like, a snowstorm that, like, shuts everything down, like, everything just keeps going, so I learned how to drive in the snow, I learned how to drive on ice, um, because they treat the roads up north, in the northeast, and so, so that was kind of, like, the mindset that I am familiar with, like, it snows, there's any winter weather type of thing, like, we can keep going, they treat the roads in Rhode Island, I had a Corolla, Toyota Corolla, a few years ago, that I was just driving on the roads with, like, yeah, that's fine, so, when I moved to Texas with my husband, I was there in the winter, 
Now, Texas winter is not winter. It's like winter for like two days and then it's summer again. But what ended up happening to me, um, they had, there was in Texas last year, um, a, like a winter storm. Everything was, I think we got a little bit of snow, but it was mostly ice and everything shut down. My, my job at the time I worked retail, like they closed, they're like, we're not going in the store. Um, stores closed because of the ice and my husband still had to work. And he worked at a coffee shop because the coffee shop was still open for some reason because everything else was closed. Um, and what, what (laughs) I kind of laugh at it now because pride comes before the fall, but, um, basically I had my Toyota Corolla. My husband had, um, a, my Corolla was uh, 2005. My husband had a Chevy Cavalier 2004, and his tires were nearly bald, in bad shape. My tires were good, because I had just replaced them a few years ago, because I had a flat, whatever, um, and so my husband had to go to work, and he left before me, and the ice was just gonna keep getting bad in Texas that day, and so since I, I had just prepared my car to go to work, and then I got the text that, like, I didn't have to go, um, and so, knowing me, like, what I knew, like, I'm, like, everybody's overreacting, come on, like, I've, I've driven in the snow, I've driven on the ice, I know, I know how to drive, like, I know how to drive carefully when there's icy conditions, because I do this all the time in Rhode Island, and knowing that my husband's tires were a lot worse off than mine, I was concerned that he would be sliding on the ice coming back home from work because I'm a concerned wife, you know what I'm saying? And so I was like, let me, now that my car is ready, I took the time to, I got my little ice scraper, the brush, you know what I'm saying? Like I was getting my car ready to go to work and then figured out like that I didn't have to. So I'm like, I'm going to drive to the coffee shop that my husband works at so that we have my car there. And I was assuming that by the time he got out of work, the conditions would be worse that we could drive my car back to our apartment because his tires are bad. So if you're tracking with this, you see where my where my headspace is. So I'm a cautious driver, especially in the winter. Like I know how it goes. Everything's good the first ten minutes out of uh, out on the road, and then I hit this bridge. There's nothing, nothing preventative. No salt, no gravel. Nothing on this bridge is just a sheet of ice. No warning, no traffic cones saying there's ice on this bridge, don't go on this bridge, no closures. Texas didn't put nothing on this bridge. I was I was driving like 20 in a 50 because that's what you do when it's icy and snowy. And my car slid nearly hit somebody else it like turned on its side and I smashed into the railing of this overpass I was terrified I thought I was gonna die um and yeah so basically I'm never going to Texas in the winter because they don't have the resources to treat um the roads when it's winter time because it's always summer in Texas and like I understand that but they should have enough to not have so many so many casualties like that because I, I don't remember the exact number but last year there was so many people who did the same thing or like people in Texas just don't know how to drive like when it's icy um so anyway given that information now back in Rhode Island when we have similar conditions I'm a little bit more apprehensive because of the bad car accident I got into last year because it was really scary on top of a bridge that's like who knows how many feet above the ground hundreds of feet above the ground um I'm glad, obviously, that the railing stopped my car from flipping over the side of the bridge because that's what they're supposed to do. Um, But now, even though we're in Rhode Island and Rhode Island treats the roads well, ice is still ice. And no matter how slow you're you're driving on it, if there's ice, you're going to slide. So um, tying back to the story about me being in Worcester today in a different town... um, I was also apprehensive because I'm like, uh, it, there's just a snowstorm yesterday. The, the roads are still crazy. My husband was telling me yesterday about how he slid a little bit on the ice. So I'm like, I don't want to be out there because I don't want to get in an accident like I did last year. 
Um, so I just wanted to let you guys in on some anxiety that I'm feeling today about that. But now that we're here, um, now that I'm here in Worcester, and not only is it a different town I've never been to, also there's still a lot of snow on the ground, but it is a beautiful sunny day. Every, a lot of things are melting right now, even though it's still like 20 degrees. Um, and the roads look a lot better, so I feel safer driving. <laughs> And I, I really feel like I, I can have a good time today and I can enjoy, um, like, visiting new coffee shops. And I want to go thrifting by myself. Like, I'm excited to have the opportunity to hang out by myself again, like, in public, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a different thing when you don't have a car, you're trapped in your house. Well, I don't want to say trapped but it feels like it <laughs> when when you can't really go anywhere um if you like don't have the money for an uber or there's not a bus or you know like there's other ways you can get out places but if essentially you're not really going anywhere you don't have transportation and you're like okay um whether you're working from home or you're just like doing something at home or you're a homemaker but you can't really go anywhere and then when you have the opportunity to go somewhere when you can borrow the car or you can um, take a bus somewhere and you've, or you have errands to run, just like, it's so funny how running errands by myself, like, right now, actually having something to do that's, like, going shopping or just being able to go thrifting, even just to window thrift, like, you don't have to spend anything, but just, like, hang out or go to coffee shop and work and just change up the scenery, it's so funny how that can just be so exciting um, and just so much, so much different than just, like, sitting at home, um, so, yeah, that's my story, <laughs> um, I'm still a little bit nervous to drive, but I think it's gonna be okay, and I think it's gonna be great, and I'm looking forward to having a, a really good day, um, doing independent stuff, and hanging out in a new, town for a day so um yeah wow that was only 12 minutes I was about to close it <laughs> um man is there anything else I want to say to you guys today I don't know I I can't remember if I explained it in the other um in the previous podcast episode but I, I want to have these, I, I want to, I'm starting this podcast because, um, I just want a space to be able to talk about, um, things like this that aren't necessarily related to knitting or creating, but also to talk about the thing, the other things that, um, my other interests or like sewing or trying something new or just reflecting on something that I have tried. Um, so Yeah. Let me know what you guys think of this, if this is something that you enjoy. Um, and thank you to you guys who who comment on my stuff and who appreciate the stuff that I put out. It is really cool, and it means a lot. So I think I'm going to end it here because I have nothing else to say right now. <laughs> uh, so I hope you have a good day, and maybe do something that um, kind of scares you a little bit, but you know you'd be the better for. Um, yeah. Okay. Bye.